recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago and beyond. This is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is... No welcome, Matt. Today is Thursday, November the 21st. And Cecil. Yeah. It is a glorious Matt Gates free kind of day, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Matt Gates doesn't get a lot of things for free, it turns out. <laughs> he has to pay for quite a few things. Uh, but, well, we'll talk uh, about that, but you've got some YouTube news. <laughs> yeah, we should talk about YouTube, I guess. Let's talk about YouTube. Yeah, so this week on YouTube, I posted a short video. Some people might not have seen it, but it, the long and short of it is, essentially for YouTube from now on, we're going to just be posting our show as segments. We're going to be releasing it in the morning when the show releases to the wide audience and on an audio format. So you can just go straight to YouTube and watch it. There's going to be a playlist. You could actually just watch it as a playlist. It, the, the experience of watching our show as segments shouldn't change too much from people, but there will be separate shows. We won't be premiering it anymore. The reason why we're changing it, I'll be real brief about this. You could watch the entire video. It's only like a four minute video, but I'll be real brief. The reason why we're changing it is it's harder for YouTube to take an entire show down if uh, for both what they consider misinformation and for uh, monetization strike stuff, it's harder for them to take an entire show down if it's already segmented out. So mm -hmm. they can't pull down the whole show. They'll just pull down a segment and it just makes it easier for us. We're going to let people know if you're watching, you know, even if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening to this and you were somebody who watches stuff on YouTube and you liked having that whole show experience, Patrons will continue to get that whole show experience. We post it for patrons early. The entire video goes out to patrons, but uh, but we just it's just so much easier to do it this way. Uh, I I do believe the show for the next couple weeks until we decide what to do with Twitch is still going to be posting about the same time I think on Twitch. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Ian about that, but I suspect it'll still be posting the Twitch for a little while until we make a decision on how that's going to continue on too. Uh, but we are going to be segmenting the show on YouTube. So if you're seeing this now, it's part of a segment. So will Ian still have a chance to give us copyright strikes all that's the time? That's the best part about it is, is that is that, that stuff will just go in the main show and the audio show, and that doesn't give you a copyright strike. So we won't get anything like that. Uh, he's not going to be bumpering out things uh, he he will be bumpering it out for our patrons, right? Right. But he won't be bumpering it out for the the because it won't have a bumper. It'll just but if, come right if in. If Ian can't cost us money, I don't. Yeah, like, why I, are we even keeping him around? I don't. Feels, it's it confusing. feels like it feels extra wasteful. <laughs> 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 this would be where Ian would chime in with a full throated defense, but he doesn't listen to the show. Yeah, he doesn't so listen it's to fine. the show, so it doesn't matter. It's, Tom, it's I want to ask you before we move on to the main show, yeah. what did you think about this week and the appointments and lack thereof, I guess? Well, I think the, <laughs> the best thing about the appointments this week were the appointments that weren't. I think yeah. the, the, oh, and that yeah, is, that's a good feeling. That is Matt Gates. Matt mm -hmm. Gates pulled out. Uh, uh -huh. Now that's not a line directly from his ethics complaint. No, I don't, we no, don't know if he pulled out or not. We have no idea. The, We're not sure of the uh, seventeen-year-olds he's yeah. accused of trafficking. He's for in sex. Florida, so he probably did because you know what I mean. It's harder. That's there true. To make that's sure true. that you're gonna want, you know you're going to want to pull out if you're in Florida. Yeah, I either mean, pull out or make sure that she's on illegal. <laughs> But yeah, uh, <laughs> medication to prevent a pregnancy. Look, 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 you don't want to create more Floridians, right? Like of all the things to do in this world, like I feel like we can all agree that we don't need more Floridians. I think I, I look. I don't care about Florida or not. I don't want any more Matt Gateses. Like Jesus that's all I'm Christ. saying, man. Like good <laughs> lord, no. So he's done. Play. What I love is he resigned from the House. Yeah. Accepted the nomination for Attorney General, and then is now like left the running for attorney general. So he's fucking jobless right now. Yeah. He's fucking I think, unemployed. I think this was soft landing plan on his part, right? Because like he left the house, so they had to discontinue the inquiry. Yeah, the ethics investigation. And so now that that ethics inquiry's shelved. Now they have the report, but they don't they didn't they shelved it. And so now he's that's not going to continue. Right. Our, Merrick Garland, who has turned into an absolute trash 
uh, attorney general when it comes to going after some of these people and, you know, actually pursuing people that are breaking the law in high places. He's done a very bad job of this, especially if they're finding really horrible shit in the ethics report that they don't even want to release. And Merrick Garland was just like, yeah, we just decided not to fucking go after, like, get the fuck yeah, out of here, What the dude. fuck is that? Yeah, that what dude should have- What the fuck is that? Should have fucking sicked the dogs on him. Instead, he was just like, ah, I don't think so. So anyway, Merrick Garland is his own disaster. But I will say, this is a great way for Gates to have a soft landing because Gates can- now be like, oh, well, they didn't want me to be the AG, so that's fine. I'll just go land myself at a corporation or a big law spot somewhere and be fine. And and there's and that big report that was going to be either if he stayed in Congress, it was going to be a big report, or if he it was the AG, it was going to be a big report. Now it's gone. Doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, this is a this is totally a get. But like, you know, it may doesn't it make you wonder why there's ever an ethics committee investigation that is not public. Do you think yeah, like man. as like just as like a as a democracy that that should just never be the case that all ethics committee investigations should always and by definition be public 100% of the time just without like this is like one of the few times I've ever found myself agreeing with Marjorie Taylor Greene of all people. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the tweet she yeah, tweeted she out. Yeah, she said she's like she was like threatening us with a good time or something. She was. Thought, she was yeah. like she's like, "Oh, if we're going to blow up this for an ethics then we should open up all the ethics." And I was like, "Well, I thought they all were open." Yeah. Like what world are we what weird world are we living in where we're like, "All right, well there's an ethics investigation." Doesn't look good. I mean, I'm not I telling you what's in it. What? I, can, I can see one side of that in the sense that like unsubstantiated claims in the information ecosystem can grow and be, you know, even if they're found to be false, people still have to hear them. And so someone saying an unsubstantiating claim or lying in front of an ethics committee, and then that becomes a thing that now they have to play damage control. And we all know the corrections on page 10, not on the first page. So now you have a person who's like, maybe ruined their whole life because they had an open book. At the, so I can, do you see what I mean? Like they're. Yeah. I, and I, and I, I, I agree that like, while it's being investigated, it should not be open. Like during the investigative phase. Right. I totally, for exactly the reason that you articulate. I right? see what you're during, saying, but you're saying the report should be open. But once it's done, every, okay. we should have a fucking right to it. Like, I take back what find? I said. I take you back know? what I, I thought I was talking. <laughs> we're talking about two totally different things. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree with you. Once it's done and you guys have made your decision, let's right. see it. Let's see yeah. it. Unse like, what are you talking about? Like, we're not going to let. Well, he's he quit, so it's moot. That's not moot. Like, yeah. wh who the fuck was that guy that worked for me? Like, what if he wants to run for Congress again? Yeah. The problem is, like, he could just run for Congress again. And, like, I don't know that, that I don't know how that works, but it's probably a fucking total reverse card Uno duo or whatever. <laughs> he just get, he goes, so he runs for Congress again and then gets two seats somehow. So how did this even happen? <laughs> uh, or, I also heard that it's possible that, um, that they could appoint him, Florida could appoint him Rubio's spot. Oh, because he's oh, right. Florida because he's vacated and, to be and, yeah and, secretary but, of state. But I don't know if that ethics thing then comes back, right? Because it, right. they got all the ethics stuff. Now what? Right. So, yeah, I don't know the enough of the inner workings. What I did want to say about all the appointments, though, I want before we get too far afield, I wanted to mention like something Bannon said years ago, which is fill the entire information system with shit. He had yeah. said that years ago. Fill it with <clears throat> shit. Just fill it with garbage because then nobody knows what's true, what's not. And also people get fatigued. And I want to remind people how fatigued we were during mm -hmm. Trump's presidency. Trump did the exact same thing last time. He appointed fucking complete bonkers, crazy people that you would <laughs> never expect to be part of these head of these departments. He, he appointed people, you're like, what in the world is happening? And think back to Biden's appointments. One, I can't even really name them. But two, when we look through them, we're like, oh yeah, that guy's a PhD and he did this yeah. and that makes sense. And oh, that person's a general and it makes sense that they would be in charge. It's not like, you know, you're not, you're not appointing the Grinch in charge of presence or whatever, you know, <laughs> like whatever, whatever Gates is doing, the exact opposite, the, the, the fucking fox in charge of the hen house or whatever, 
Trump is doing those things, but it's not, it's, it, it's also craziness, like a, cr yeah. there's like a level of insanity to it. And I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it's, uh, calculated insanity, but I think the right has found a perfect person in Trump mm -hmm. who doesn't really think about what he does. He pulls yeah. the trigger and just throws people out there. And it's great to mask the information ecosystem so it gets a bunch of people talking about these crazy appointments. And once in a while, they can slip something past the goalie while we're talking about stuff that doesn't matter as much. And I don't know how much these appointments are gonna matter, but I know that we've got to pay attention to a lot of things at once. Yeah, well, this feels like a it's what plants crave moment. Oh, you absolutely. Know? No, like, I'm not. I'm not. Like, yeah. Linda McMahon. She was the small business administrator last year, last time. And now she's in charge of education. Last yes. year. So last, last time Trump was in charge, he put the Amway lady in front of the Department of Education. Yeah, maybe you know, she's going to be the small business in administration person because that makes more sense. That makes way more <laughs> sense, right? Yeah, she should be like in charge of our pyramids, but instead we had Ben Carson who thought they were full of grain or whatever. <laughs> full of you salt know? or whatever, yeah. <laughs> Big salt shakers. Like we seriously got, we got a fucking like wrestling mogul. This is so yeah. unbelievably goofy, stupid. And like, I'm just like, there's a part of me that if this was happening somewhere else, I would be like, oh, get me some popcorn. I will watch this, but it's happening here. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, wait, we're, we're kind of the, ooh, like, uh, there's yeah, a nuclear no, briefcase it, and, and there's like people like fucking body slamming each other in I, the Oval Office or I gotta whatever. say though, and I think, I think that this is, this is something that, that occurred to me. I mean, I might even mention it last time is I don't know how damaging these people will be in these jobs. I wonder yeah. if these people are going to have to find their feet, understand what's happening around them. These aren't insiders. These aren't the insiders that, that were promised to them in Project 2025. These are people who don't understand what's really happening. But I mean, tell me Linda McMahon yeah. knows what's happening with fucking no. the Department of Education. She doesn't, right? She has no idea, yeah. Now, that doesn't mean she can't be damaging, right? Doesn't mean she can't but, break it, Yeah, right? but it yeah. also doesn't mean that she can't break it with a scalpel like an insider could. Right. You know, it reminds me like when I first got, I'll just tell you a quick story. When I first got the job that I have now, so I've been with, with the company I'm at now for 11 years. And when I got this job, it was a big job and it was a big promotion and it was a brand new company and everything was just different. Everything was just different. And the lady that was supposed to like mentor me into the job a little bit, she wanted to see me fail in that job. So she was trying to sabotage me. And so like she kept doing all kinds of stuff and like lying. And it was just, it was a train wreck. My first like six months of that job, I had no idea what I was doing. I walked into work every day, Cecil. And I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do today. And I would sit down in a chair and be like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do today. Until I figured out what I was supposed to do, I didn't really do much of anything, right? I was not an effective person to your point. I was not an effective person in that role for several months until I figured out, okay, I think I understand how this shit works. And that is a way smaller job. I have a way smaller job than like secretary of education. Or secretary of defense. Or secretary of defense. Yeah. Like this is a guy who like last time he went to work, went to Fox and Friends on the weekend show. Yeah. And now he's going to be showing up at yeah. the Pentagon. We messed up last time. Somebody said it was Fo he's a he's a Fox and Friends like secondary host, like a weekend show. Dude, so he's a JV. Fox, he yeah, he's Fox's friend of a friend. He's not even <laughs> Fox's friend. And we don't even know what the Fox says. Like it doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's gonna be bizarre. And like also the people surrounding like Hegstead or Hegsworth or Wiggle Stud or whatever his fucking name is, I forgot. The Fox and Friend guy. Like, it's not like he's going to walk into a room in the Pentagon and command respect. No, of course not. You know, I was yeah. thinking about that, too. He's going to walk into a room full yeah. of smart, serious people, and they're going to look at him and be like, dude, you're not my boss. Yeah. You're not, I'm not like- You're a transitional guy. You're right. the acting guy. I don't, I don't even care if they fucking put you yeah. in and say that you're the qualifying. You're not quali- I would no. never listen to you. Dude, I'm like, I'm a fucking four-star general and shit and some- fucking wiggle butt walks in the door and he's like, I've got to call a meeting. I'd be like, yeah. I'm not going to your meeting. And one thing I, I think- I just wouldn't project, even go to your meeting. 
you know, we, we were at a lot of Project 2025. Yeah. And I think one of the things about Project 2025 that to me, they were underestimating is the ability to look at your boss and tell them to go fuck themselves that yeah, governmental man. employees have. And I don't think that they're going to be able to change things so drastically that they'll be able to make like crazy firings and things like that. And also, if you fire a bunch of people and other people think they're next, they're not going to make it easy on you. They're not going to roll over for you. You got to fight for every inch you take there. So I don't know that it's going to be as easy as that plan lays it out to be. It yeah, might I don't know be. It is either, it's possible. So. I mean, you already have the Doge guys, the Vivek Ramaswamy and, and Elon Musk, they're not even real department is already saying <laughs> I know. that they're going to cut, they have massive layoffs in, in, uh, in, uh, across the board for governmental jobs. And, and that this, this, that smacks to me is like, I mean, like what that says to me is that they're trying to do the same thing Elon did when he came in and Twitter, which was, yeah. he didn't know how it worked. And so he just let a bunch of people go. And then it kind of, kept itself up enough so that it, there was still a system and he was able to save it. Now it works shittily. It doesn't work as well as it did before. And it doesn't have the content moderation stuff that it had. And it goes down once in a while. And whenever he has to have somebody on, they sound like uh, Sylvester from <laughs> Putty Tat or whatever, you know, they sound weird. But he that's the thing is you're in a situation where uh, I think they're treating the government the same way he was treating that business, which is I'm just going to let everything go. Yeah. And then if it's still standing with the toothpicks, I'll shore up what I need to, but if everything's just going to go and they're going to treat it the same way. The government's going to be treated the same way this upcoming term. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be bizarre and it's going to, I mean, the wreckage is severe, but I am glad to see Matt Gates, even temporarily. I love to see an unemployed Matt Gates. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. nothing better. Uh, there is like a, a an in jail Matt Gates would be better, but an unemployed Matt Gates I'll take. I, I will wonder if his it. friend takes EBT. 